Greetings to all of you and a very warm welcome to everyone who is watching this video. Today's video is of class 11. Subject is mathematics. The topic that we are going to cover is mensuration and we are going to look at how to calculate the surface area of 3D solids. So let's get started. So we are going to cover how to calculate the total surface area of three main solids. They are number one, cube, number two, cuboid, and number three, cylinder. So let's start off with a cube. Now at this point, what I want you to do is, I want you to pause this video and look around you and see if you can grab a solid that resembles a cube. Now if you found something that looks like a cube or resembles a cube, that's great. If you haven't, that's still okay. We're going to examine a cube very closely so that you can understand how and where exactly the formula for the total surface area comes from. Now here, as you can see, we have a cube. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this cube up and see what we get. So ready? So there you go. So we get six squares. Let's do that again and this time in slow motion. So let's close it back and let's open it up again in slow motion. So as you can see, once we flatten this out, we get six equal squares. So how can we calculate the total surface area of this cube? Let's find out. Now let's examine those six faces of a cube one by one. So we start with a base and then we have a top that's directly on top of it. So that makes it two faces, base and top. And then we have a front face that's facing us. And we have a back face that's directly opposite of it. So that makes it two more faces, the front and the back face. And then we have one face that's on the right hand side and one that's on the left hand side if you're holding a cube. So that makes it a total of six faces, including the left and right faces. So if I want to calculate the area of this cube, I know that these, this cube is made up of six identical squares. Okay, hope you're getting the point. This cube is made up of six identical squares. So all I have to do is I just need to calculate the area of one square and then multiply it by six. Now, how can I calculate the area of one square? So let's say this length is L and since it's a, it's a square, all the lengths are going to be equal. Area of a square is equal to L square. Now this area will be the same for every square that we have here. So it will be L square for every face. So that means the base and the top combined make 2L square. The front and the back combined make 2L square again. The left and the right combined make 2L square. So that makes it a total of 2 plus 2 plus 2. As you can see, that makes it a total of 6L square. So the area of a solid cube is equal to 6L squared. Now a cube will not always be a solid cube. It can sometimes be an open top cube as well. That means the top face is missing. So in that case, what's going to happen? As you can see, the top face is no more with us. So we still have L square, L square, L square, L square. L square. So that means as far as the base and top is concerned, we no more have the top. So we just have L square left. The front and the back will make 2L square. The left and the right will make 2L square again. So now the total, as you can see, let's sum this up. So L square plus 2L square plus 2L square will make it 5L square. So hope you're getting the point. The area of an open top cube is equal to 5L squared. Now let's talk about a cuboid. Now cuboids are relatively easier to find. So if you have something around you that looks like a cuboid, pause this video and get a hold of it. So hopefully you're back with a cuboid in your hand. Now let's examine this cuboid and see how we can find out the total surface. So here, as you can see, we have a cuboid. Now again, I'm going to open this up just to see what we get. So as you can see that we get six rectangles. Let's do that again in slow motion. Again, as you can see, we get six rectangles. Now let's study these rectangles one by one and see what the formula for calculating the total surface area of a cuboid is equal to. Now let's examine those six faces that we talked about earlier. So again, we have a base, we have a top. So that makes it two faces, base and top. We have a front face that's facing us. We have a back face that makes it two more front and back. 
we have a face that's on the left hand side and one that's on the right hand side so that makes it two more so in total we have six faces now let's see how we can calculate the total surface area of these faces one by one so we start with the base and top now the dimensions of this cube as you can see are length times width times height so this will be my length this right here will be my width so the base and top are going to be identical so the area of one face is going to be length times width so since we have two we'll multiply it by two now let's talk about the front and the back face so this dimension as you can see is going to be the height so we will have a rectangle of dimensions l by h so the area will be equal to l into h as you can see and then since we have two of these we'll multiply this by two as well moving on we have the left face and the right face so again the dimensions are going to be width by height so the area of the left and right face i'll write it here is going to be equal to width times the height so since we have two of these so we'll multiply this by two as well so now the total the total surface area is going to be equal to two times lw since length times width is going to become lw plus two times lh which represents length into height plus two times wh so this is equal to the total surface area of a solid cuboid so as we saw earlier we may not always have a solid cuboid it can be open from the top as well in which case as you can see the top will no more be with us however we will still have the base intact so that means length times width will still be considered but the top is no more with us so we'll just cancel this out so length times width you can leave it as it is or just to emphasize on the fact that it's just one face we'll multiply it by one the front and the back face are still very much there so the front face and the back face are have dimensions w by h width by height so we'll multiply it by two the left and the right face have dimensions length by height so we'll multiply that by two as well so now in total the surface area will be equal to length times width plus two times w times h plus twice of length times height so this is how you can calculate the total surface area of an open top cuboid i hope it's clear so far and i hope you're with me now we're going to move on and we're going to talk about a cylinder now if you can find an object around you that resembles a cylinder get a hold of it if you cannot that's still perfectly all right let's examine a cylinder so here we have a solid cylinder and let's see what happens when i open this up so when i open this up i get two circles and something that looks like a rectangle in fact it is a rectangle but let's see that again in slow motion Again, we have two circles and one rectangle, which was initially curved, but once we open it up, it turns into a rectangle. Now let's examine those faces that we saw earlier. So we have a base, which is a circle. We have something which we call the curved surface area. You can think of it as a label, a label that goes around a cylindrical can. And we of course have something that you can call a lid, something that comes on top. Now the question is, how do we calculate the total surface area of a solid cylinder? Now for that, there's one thing that we should understand and that is the width of this rectangle is equal to the circumference of the circle. So how do you calculate the circumference of a circle? The circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r. So that means the width of the rectangle that we have is equal to 2 pi r. And we don't have to worry about the length since the length is going to be equal to the height of the cylinder. So let's see how we can calculate the area of these three faces. So starting with the circle, the area of a circle, as we know, is equal to pi r square. So since we have two of these, so that means pi r square each. So let's write the area of the lid as pi r square and the area of the base as pi r square. Now let's talk about the curved surface area, which is now a rectangle so the area of a rectangle is basically equal to length times width but since we don't have a length and we don't have width we're going to use the dimensions that we have so the length as you can see is equal to the height of the cylinder and the width as you can see is equal to 2 pi r now h times 2 pi r will give us 2 pi r h 
So the curved surface area is equal to 2 pi r h. Now let's add this up and see what do we get. So we have pi r square plus 2 pi r h plus pi r square. So we have 2 pi r squares. So once we add this up, we get 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h. So this is how you calculate the total surface area of a solid cylinder. Now, as always, you may not always have a solid cylinder. You may have a cylinder that's open from the top. Like for example, say you have a tuna can and if you open it from the top, so it's no more a solid cylinder. It's something that we call an open top cylinder. So what happens then? There you can see the lid is no more with us. So we're just going to cross that out. However, we still have the curved surface area, which is equal to 2 pi r h, and we still have the base, which is equal to pi r square. So now the total surface area is going to be equal to 2 pi r h plus pi r square. Now there's a third case in a cylinder, and that is of a hollow cylinder. A hollow cylinder means something like a pipe, right? That's open from the top and that's open from the bottom as well. So what happens then? You don't have the lid, so let's cancel that. You don't have the base, so let's cancel that as well. So that means we're just left with the curved surface area, which is equal to 2 pi r h. So the total surface area is equal to the curved surface area, which as we saw earlier, is equal to 2 pi r h. So I hope you're with me so far, and I hope everything so far is crystal clear. Now to wrap things up, so far we have learned how to calculate the area of a cube, the area of a cuboid, and finally the area of a cylinder. Now I hope everything so far is crystal clear and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you all in the next video inshallah. Until then, take care. Allah Hafiz.